you can learn all you know the norm and all of that but unless you're actually putting it into application it's really hard to you know develop the clinical skills and we're in this program to get a clinical degree we're in this program to eventually work hands-on with patients so it's important to get that experience early so we're going to start out at a high level he'll probably respond to it okay. um, and then I'll go down in steps okay, okay. Yeah, I know. Our program is, is very well rounded. We've got great faculty and we're one of the few programs where uh, the, the academic faculty who do a lot of research are actually in the classroom quite a bit. Beautiful. Okay. In this lab, um, we're doing a lot of the legwork for developing uh, future applications for the clinic. Um, we have to know what's normal before we can find what's abnormal. As far as the clinic is concerned, we work hands-on with patients every day. We have hearing aid patients. We test um, children who come in for uh, speech therapy. We make sure that their hearing is okay. And it's amazing. Um, so these aren't the prettiest wave because he's moving around, mm -hmm. but we still see this peak right here mm -hmm. within the normal range. You ready, Olive? Set, ready, set. Go. Oh. Is he happy or sad? I'm sad. He looks. Go. I'm here today because my daughter, Olive, four years old, takes speech therapy here. Where's the house? <gasps> A window. It's been a great experience, you know, from Olive learning from them and Olive teaching the clinicians and the, the clinicians are very fresh in their therapy approaches and steps and that's what I appreciate the most and I think we all have a good time. <laughs> what we hope that may be happening and hope to achieve throughout our research line over many years is that es establishing these better efficacy measures, um, we can better equip researchers and clinicians to choose various technologies for their patient. There is a lot of promise and there is a lot of need for this and even though it may not be fully understood by clinicians or even patients, it's something that when you take the broad view of the field, it's something that could really benefit the patient. Ready? Boom. Ready? Boom. Ready? The kinds of things that we do clinically oh. and, uh, and in terms of research is to better understand their cognitive, you know, their memory and attention problems and how that affects their language. And so the ultimate goal is to find interventions that are going to help them with their memory and their attention and their language. And then if, when you, you improve those basic building blocks, that percolates up to improve their reading, which then improves their overall academic skills. So if you hear two cat, your response would be? Cat two. You've got it, all right. At the moment, we are trying to build profiles and understand how these mechanisms of attention and working memory and short-term memory, how they play a role in language development. Rabbit dress. Five, nine, what? Five, four, nine. And ultimately, of course, it, we're looking at doing research not only to help with diagnostics, but also with interventions. So down the road, once we build profiles, we'll be really interested in trying to see how intervention strategies that target these areas might help these kiddos. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> So it's, it's a really wonderful place to study from faculty to the staff to research to clinic to facilities. It's, you have an excellent experience.